Stopwatch has started on the Columbus Blue Jackets. Did any team have a more hard luck year last year than the Columbus Blue Jackets? It starts with Pierre-Luc Dubois deciding he doesn't want to play there, and then he was awful, and then you have a lame dunk, duck coach in in John Tortorella who tries to make Patrick Laine, who he was traded for, into Todd Bertuzzi, and that didn't work. And then in the offseason, they lose Seth Jones. I mean, it's a lot. New coach, new outlook. Here's some bounce-back seasons expected. You ready? Line, Domi, Jake Voracek. Right. Back with Columbus. It's weird. Um, he was tied for the Flyers' lead in scoring. So what do we say about the Columbus Blue Jackets now? Uh, well, they're uh, uh, very different. The turnover is staggering. There is a giant hole uh, in their leadership in that they're moving on uh, from their captain. Oh, yeah. Um, Felino's gone, too. Oh, right. Um, <laughs> they they did lock up Wierenski, which was a victory for them mm-hmm. in that, you know, not everyone is leaving. Um, they had to pay him a you have to stay in Columbus tax on his deal. Woo, did they ever. Wow. Um yeah, out of him and Jones, I was surprised he he got more money. But their goaltending is solid. Mm-hmm. They still have Merz Lickens. They still have Corpus Allo. And everyone's always talking about, oh, one of them's got to go. No, they don't. Uh, so they're keeping them. Any team with goaltending has a fighting chance. Um, they do have some guys who can move the puck. Uh, they need more finishers. And this is the problem. Voracek is not a finisher. Domi can score, but he's traditionally a playmaker. Mm-hmm. Um, Patrick Laine. You Gus Nyquist. A, Gus Nyquist. You give him... Uh, surely Lina can do something with one of those two. Yes. At least. So my, my question with this team is, is okay, so obviously maybe retool your... I don't know if you call it a rebuild because they're not tearing anything down. No. They've got great goaltending. They're too good to be mm-hmm. rebuilding. But they also don't have... I mean, I guess Domi would be considered their number one center. Yeah. Yes. So Cole Sillinger is going to slot in there. Jack Roslovic... Of all, anybody that was traded, you know, between Winnipeg and Columbus last year, he seemed like the most comfortable. It seemed like he was really enjoying playing at home. Um, but, you know, what 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 is this team now? Because Torts has been so much a part of their identity for a long, long time. You know, boring, low event hockey. But they did outplay themselves, right? Every time anybody underestimated the Columbus Blue Jackets as Leaf fans, no, you were paid for that. You, you sorry, they they made you pay for that. Is that the direction that they're going? They did have an internal hire as their head coach, so you kind of wonder with Brad Larson, is much going to change? Uh, I would think yes, but it, w- what we forget is this isn't a video game, and yeah. they're, they're not going to instantly forget how to play John Tortorella hockey. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have that in their DNA. John Tortorella is a part of this franchise, and mm-hmm. this is – this is what happens. You know, pe- people forget when you move on from a coach, a lot of their lessons and style and habits, a lot of that stays with them, but they're going to inject a little Brad Larson in there. And, you know, players, they uh, they like the results of playing a really strict uh, defensive style of hockey, but they like to get creative. They like to go out there and have fun. And it'll be interesting seeing the Blue Jackets go and have fun out there. Because to me, that's Patrick Laine. Mm-hmm. He's not... We, we've talked a lot in these videos about fit. Laine can fit on... I don't know. Do you think teams could use a 40-goal scorer? I, I think know. probably. Maybe. Probably, probably. But stylistically with the Blue Jackets, he didn't mesh at all. Um, but with someone feeding him the puck at all times, like a guy like Voracek, oh yeah, I can see that working. When do you guys... What do you think needs to happen for Line to be in the zone because when he is you can kind of tell through his interviews he's got this kind of a smirk and he's very confident haven't seen a lot of the joy that he used to have in Winnipeg playing in the last couple seasons frankly it's tough with a goal scorer because goals are their oxygen for for a lot of these guys I heard it a long time ago and it's just like a, an assist just isn't the same and it's funny because I think he played one game with the Jets and had three points. I think he had two goals, one assist. He did. And that, I think, outscored himself in Columbus for a number of weeks, um, which just isn't good enough. So they, they got to get him one early. Um, he has to has to click on the power play. It's, it's near impossible to uh, have a season like the ones we've seen at Alina without clicking on the power play, unless you're the Leafs, apparently. Um, so th- that's what needs to happen. What's Jake Voracek's job with this team? Passing the puck. Here, there, and everywhere. He uh, was one of the 
guys tied for the Flyers' lead in scoring last year, and I think he had nine goals. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> he had nine goals. That guy <laughs> slings the puck. He is a pure playmaker, one of the, one of the few – in the league. It's an interesting pickup too, because a, it's a big salary in there for three more years. B a and lot Cam of Cam Atkinson, Cam Atkinson. Yes. That they, and, and Cam Atkinson to me, at least was like summed up what Columbus was. Uh, he's, he's a, he was a really good finisher too. Yes. Like, so it's weird that one was traded for the other. That was obviously a weakness that they identified is they, they need more puck. Movement. Well, and maybe they couldn't set line up. Maybe you need to do that. Oh, right? You, right. You can't be, like, I don't know if they're committed enough to line A that they got to mold everything around them. I still don't really understand what's going on there. Seems, they also have they're going to so be younger, many, too, and that's going to be They also have fun. a lot of other pieces where it's not just line A there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, Domi, I think, is probably uh, fodder for the trade deadline. He's probably out because he's a UFA at the end of the year. Could have but, a huge chip on his shoulder because he wasn't picked in the expansion draft. Oh, that's, that's very true. true. Yeah. yeah, nobody really wanted him. Um, I don't look at Columbus's season this year as a rebuilding year, but I look at it as a build year. Because they have so many young pieces that aren't NHL ready. Not not in terms of ready yet, but they haven't reached their potential yet in the NHL. Hmm. So that that's a that's a year for them to develop. And then they have this surprising cast of of older guys who have been with Columbus for a while, or they've just brought in that are gonna really show the younger guys how to play. So Columbus is gonna surprise a lot of teams just by how much effort they're going to have and how much the new coach is going to motivate them and get them to play a better type of hockey. So I don't expect them to make the playoffs, but I expect them to have a really good year uh, based on expectations for what the squad should be. I, th- I think I know where we're all going to have them in, in mm-hmm. this division, but they're exactly the sort of team year in and year out. And this year is no different that make predictors look like idiots. Yes. Yeah. Yes. They're gonna they're gonna outperform expectations, but not be amongst the better teams in the NHL. Right. Another low key pickup I got to give Yarmo Kekalina some credit for here is Jake Bean. Mm-hmm. I think he's an intriguing guy out of the Carolina system. Obviously, he's played tight team stuff, and that's definitely what they're gonna want in Carolina. Feel like to me, you know, he's just signed an extension. He's twenty three years old. This guy could be a huge part of the future there behind Wierenski, Right. If he's a, if he's if that's his ceiling, a second. Uh, second line left defenseman. That's pretty solid. You got Wierenski in front of you. You don't have to take some of the heavy minutes. And maybe actually you can end, le- uh, lend some defense to... I mean, there's a lot of people that say that Zach Wierenski can't defend. Right? So maybe you could provide the defense that maybe the team was I would tell on those people they're wrong. Now, well, they Nine said the same thing about... He better be good yeah. at everything. Yes. I, think, I think he's a pretty good hockey player. Seth Jones too, right? You but they said the same thing Seth Jones him. is different. You yeah. always need more. You can't have – it's great to have a guy who can eat all the minutes in the world. Mm-hmm. You shouldn't need to do that. Uh, the other thing, a couple, uh, couple former Leafs on the defense here. Scott Harrington came yes. over notably okay. in the Phil Kessel train. And Miko Lettinen, still yep. a Columbus Blue Jacket. I don't, I don't know if Scott Harrington played enough with the Leafs to be a former Leaf well, or, or Lettinen. <laughs> also, I, I feel like the Leafs messed up in letting Scott Harrington go for nothing. He seems like they, they could have used a guy like that. Well, and, and uh, you know, the small victories sometimes help you in the long run, too. Uh, they won the Miko Lettinen trade because the goalie, who I don't even remember his name. I don't uh, know what that trade was. It was a goalie, and he's gone. <laughs> I, I don't remember who it is, but he's gone, and they still have Miko Lettinen, who there's another puck mover. The guy can move the puck. So they're going to they're gonna get some help on their uh, – uh, playmaking from their back end steve you mentioned it earlier it's one of the stronger goaltending tandems i think in the league you know you have to put i would put merce leakins and corpus Allo in the top 10 for in terms of tandems in the nhl that's pretty good i would think so um merce leakins obviously just re-signed and has an enormous uh uh extension kicking in after the 2021-22 season corpus Allo has not he's a ufa at the end of this year you have to wonder if columbus goes we're going to platoon these two forever or if Corpus Allo goes, hey, I'm testing the free agent market after this. This could be fun. Um, one thing we know Yarmo Kekalainen is extremely good at, and that's being a deadline seller. Mm. He's real good at it, and I bet he gets a king's ransom for Corpus Allo. Absolutely, and there's lots of teams looking for goaltending out there. So where do you place the Columbus Blue Jackets in the Metropolitan Division? Jesse Blake. I have them second last and seventh. Seven foot? I have them second last minus a spot last. You have them last. Yeah, I told you they're going to make us look stupid, but Mm -hmm. I'm going to have them in second last as well. Uh, And that is the timer. 
Blue Jackets, in 10 minutes, there's your season preview.